was nicely explained. But how do we apply this to design and collaboration? Are we supposed to tear each other's ideas apart? Not tear, but gently take apart. But put it back together if it works well. In fact, if it is sound, we won't be able to take it apart, right? Let's think of it as positive feedback. Early in the team process, each member must learn to respond to other people's ideas with phrases like, I like the way this works, but I wonder if it was put another way, what would happen? Or I suggest X or Y. That's a non-confrontational approach. It reminds everyone that they are all working together for the good of the project. Yes, I see what you mean. The criticism is not personal. It's only meant to make the end result stronger. And just like the five-step method we saw in the video, there are other protocols and established methods that teach focused communication using the language of critical thinking. One such method is that when the teams has the basics taken care of, mix and match. Break the teams into pairs to come up with ideas. Then pair share. Have sub teams present their ideas to each other. Then debrief. We are learning many useful things about the principles of collaboration. How many more do you have for us? Just two more. The ninth principle is reward innovation. Innovation must be rewarded. Design teams are expected to produce top quality work and often they exceed expectations. Why? Because the team process is inherently creative and it might very well deliver a great product that goes beyond the requirements of the brief. In a world of conventional approaches, we really do need a way to recognize and acknowledge out-of-the-box thinking. For this, we could use individual and team assessment rubric that contains a breakthrough column. This is a blank column that rewards innovation and invites inspiration. The tenth principle is reflect and move on. Before the team of collaborators disperses, it's good to close the circle of learning. This means allow team members to debrief and reflect on the experience. I suppose team leaders must ensure that this is done in a formal way. Yes, they have to ask questions such as, what did we learn individually and collectively? How did we function as a team? What gaps were there? How was the quality of our work and how do we improve it? These become the takeaways for each individual member of the team. Yes, and these are valuable for collaborative projects that they may be part of in the future. Thank you, Mukesh, for sharing these 10 principles for collaboration and design. Those principles make a lot of sense. Some of it may seem like common sense, but very often it's the obvious that we take for granted and forget to put into practice. Let's go visit the assignment tab for this fortnight's assignment. It is so designed that you get to work with these principles. If you have forgotten them already, no worries. It's all given there in the tab. Any final piece of advice, Mukesh? Well, I just want to say to the students doing this course, don't let criticism get you down. After all, everyone is a design critic, but not everyone is a designer. Follow your dream, and as far as collaboration goes, find your dream team every time. Thank you once again, Mukesh. Make sure you look for your next assignment on the course platform. The assignment is due any time within the next two weeks. And for now, those of you who are registered for a credit on this course, I hope your projects are coming along well to the final stage. There is not much time left. See you next time for the final module of this course, Innovation by Design. And don't forget, a little design goes a long way. Thank you.